the tires are smoking. <laughs> Let's do this. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Emeka and this is Driven Hard. Um, I figured I'd do a quick little um, post-wash video, kind of giving everybody a little heads up where I've been, what I've been up to, what's been going on with the Range Rover, and, um, and talk about a couple things about um, that actually, somebody on Instagram, you can hit me up on Instagram if you got questions, just want to connect. If you want to talk cars, off-roading and whatnot, let's connect on Instagram. Um, somebody sent me a message about um, off-roading in their, I believe it's their Evoke, and um, about like how do you get over the whole fact of like fear of wrecking it or stuff like that. So I wanna talk about that in this video. I also wanna talk about my thoughts on the new Defender and whether or not Land Rover completely <laughs> shot the bad on that one. Um, so we're gonna offer the, or I'm gonna, Talk about those things and uh, a couple other things that come to mind. Tell you about the main fault that's pissing me off in the Range Rover, even though I just got it back from the dealership. But um, as I apply some bead maker to, uh, to this, since it stopped raining finally, and we're gonna have a couple days of sun, let's, um, let's get going here. But um, all right, so first off, where have I been and what have I been up to? Um, well, as you may or may not know, we have moved from Mexico back to Canada. It's absolutely gorgeous uh, September day here, and um, we are just loving life back in Canada. And uh, I have had a chance to hit a couple trails. Um, you know, some of the spots that I used to go four by four and back in my dad's 86 Cherokee um, way back in the day. And um, yeah, so that was pretty cool. But um, Man, if you guys if you guys don't have this PNS bead maker, you go get Aesop. Shit does incredible jobs to your paint as well as how it repels water. And it's great drying aid too. But um uh, so where have I been? So we did the move um, back up to Canada and uh, I just haven't had a chance to do editing of videos and, and everything. Um, plus work has been super busy. Um, so that's basically it. I got like, I think nine videos and I filmed three more over the last couple of days. So what is that? 12 videos um, that I have to get uploaded to the channel. Plus this one, which are probably gonna throw some basic edits on and get it up to you guys tonight. So you can see what's going on. Um, but that's where I've been. Uh, so you will see some more content coming up on the channel shortly. But you also gotta remember, I got like 400 subscribers. This ain't paying the bills. So <laughs> I do have my other uh, businesses that I gotta you know, use to pay for the damages that I do this thing every now and then that we're gonna talk about in this video. Um, you know, so I can't put my full time into this as much as I want to, and that is the ultimate goal um, to make this the, uh, the full time gig. But you guys aren't here for business advice. You're here to see what I did to this thing. So yeah, that's uh, kind of where we're at with that. So new content is coming as soon as possible. But let's talk, let's talk Defender first, and then let's talk about that second question I got off or asked. Um, as a lot, I wanna show you some new battle wounds um, that I got. Um, so let's talk Defender. So the, the YouTube thing would be to start slicing in pictures and clips of the Defender. I ain't gonna do that because I don't have time for that. Chances are, you, you know what the Defender is, you've seen all the cool things or unimpressive things on it. My thoughts, as I catch my breath here, is this. Could Land Rover have done a better job with the Defender? Totally, 100%. But let's remove the, hey, it's not like the Defender from the 90s. Well, no shit, it's not fucking 1994 anymore, it's 2020. Nothing's going to be like the 90s. So stop coming at Land Rover with that crap. Um, these morons who are like, oh, Pretender. Well, no shit, nigga. Do you really want a car that's the same stuff as like 1990 in 2020? No, you don't. 
So it was never gonna be like that. No, it was not gonna have solid axles anymore. Now your argument could be like, well, hey, the you know Jeep Wrangler has solid axles. Um, and uh, you know, they've been making that essentially the same way since you know the 40s or whatever. And yeah, that that is a really good argument, but you also gotta remember who's the market for the Jeep Wrangler compared to who's the market for the Defender. They really are, even though they are off-road enthusiasts, they're two completely different markets, if that makes sense, right? It's a niche within a niche, a sub-niche. And once again, these are all my thoughts. It's not meant to be correct or whatever. So if you want to argue with me or, or disagree or, or point something out, like, hey, let's have a let's have a chat in the comments. That'd be pretty cool. But, you know, they're going after um, the market who knows Land Rover for, you know, somewhat of a luxury brand, right? Even though with the defender of the 90s, um, you know, the back in the day, was it a luxury vehicle? Not by any means. Not compared to it, like the Range Rover, the Discovery was by any means. Um, so, is it going to live up to the Defender name in terms of, um, you know, in, in North America, nobody really understands that because North America is just not the market for the Defender. It will be for the new one, 100%, but it wasn't for the old one, and that's why they stopped selling them here so much earlier, right? Um, and again, if my stats are wrong, it's because I haven't done any research and I just didn't really care to. These are just my thoughts. Um, you can correct me all you want. But when I think of the Defender, the old one, I think of overlanding in Australia, in Africa, um, you know, and stuff like that. This new one, are people going to use it for overlanding? Um, well, yeah, 100%. You're going to get people who are going to go overlanding with it and, and do that because there's always going to be those type of people. But Landover knew that was not their main market. That was not their main goal. They had to make something that was going to be um, way more comfortable, which it is. Um, they were going to have to make something that was going to be... Now, I've been in it. I haven't driven one yet, but I've, I always check them out when I'm at the dealerships. And... Compared to the Range Rover, I would not call it a luxury vehicle by any means. It is rugged. The leather is tough. Um, you can get it without leather, I believe. Everything in it feels just rugged and rough. And that's really cool. The interior has a completely, completely different feel than any other current Land Rover market or Land Rover product on the market today. And I think that's really cool. So that's good. Now, I haven't had a chance to talk with um, a tech about the mechanical bits, the underbody, and everything that makes the Defender tick. For example, is it using the same bushings that are in the Range Rover? If it is, that could be a problem, because mine, mine have failed two times on me so far. When they fail, is it a big issue? No, it just starts squeaking and cracking over every single bump. So it's more of an embarrassment than a safety concern, um, or it's not going to leave you stranded or anything like that. But, you know, let's talk about being stranded. You know, one reason I, I, I would never take the, <laughs> the Defender off or overlanding um, is because it's going to have, oh man, how many computers did they say? I don't know, you can go how many ECUs the Defender has. It's like double this. It's like a stupid amount. And those are designed to protect its sophisticated four-wheel drive system and sophisticated drivetrain. And here's the biggest problem with it. Those will lock you out from doing any further <laughs> progress in your journey to prevent damage to the drivetrain. How's that going to help you when you're like 500 miles you know, from, from civilization versus the old one, you just get, you know, some wrenches and some tools and start taking stuff apart and fixing it on the fly. Where the new one, you just can't. New cars have too much tech in them that you're not gonna be able to do that. Nor will Land Rover allow you um, unless you have like, you know, the computers to hook up to it and, and uh, you know, the engineering know-how to really 
you know, do what it, it does. You know, for example, I'm getting a, uh, I just got this back from the dealership on Friday. It seems like every time they give it back to me, there's another problem with it. And I was telling my wife, I was like, it makes sense if it, shit was out of warranty, because then I'd have to keep, keep coming back spending more money. But this is not costing me anything, it's just wasting my time. But uh, it, the computer thinks it's not going in a park. And I just tested on, my drive was on a slope, and you know, I put it in park, and it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. I put it in park, and it doesn't register that it's in park. So if you open the door, you turn it off, open the door, so it's screaming at you. But I just pulled the e-brake, and then it was, you know, it jerked and it was in park. It's like, it is in park. So the computer's just not realizing that right away for some reason. So back to the dealership. But like a problem like that, if that happens when you're out doing your overlanding, um, it might not be as easy as, you know, it might not be something you can fix right on the spot. So I don't know, that's, that's, I wish they kind of made this thing that was it, more towards the, more towards what Jeep is, has kept doing with the Wrangler, right? I wish they made it more mechanical and less sophisticated, if that makes sense, in terms of drivability. Um, you know, I was really interested to see what type of four-wheel drive system or terrain settings that was gonna be in the new software. I'm not doing any of the car work. I'm just talking to you guys. <laughs> um, you know, and that was one of the things I really wanted to, to see is like the configurable um, terrain response settings. I don't even know what they're called yet. I haven't had a chance to play around with them and nobody's done any damn videos on them yet. If you guys find one, hit me up in the comments and let me know who's producing good Defender videos. Um, because that is gonna be in the next gen, gen uh, Range Rovers and, and stuff like that. So that'd be kind of cool to see what's gonna be coming. But honestly, there's already too many four by four settings in this rig. You don't need to tell it, I want more or less wheel spin. <laughs> you know, I want the, the, what's the other one? The center diff, or I don't know. You don't need that. Like more or less wheel spin, it's going to mud mode, go to sand mode, go to snow mode. You don't need to keep, you, you don't need to dive in there any more than it already is. I think they're going to a point where it's like, come on guys, now you're just trying to play gimmicky. Now, on that note, right? On that note, I did do a video um, two days ago. <laughs> and I was stuck in like a mini ravine with, with really wet, deep sand, and I went through all the modes. And the last thing I tried, the only thing that got me out was low traction launch. So, am I just eating my words here? When I say Land Rover, you're, you're becoming too gimmicky with all these additional settings, whereas <laughs> grass, gravel, snow was not able to get me out but when I did activate that further step and hit low traction launch, well, shit, <laughs> it's further sophisticated all of the computers to tell the truck, to tell the wheels, to tell the ABS systems, traction control systems and everything else, hey, you know, we're in this setting, but we're gonna go even, you know, even more serious to get him out of the thing. And I, I couldn't believe it, I got out, and it was crazy. I have it on video. Uh, maybe I'll slice in a little teaser right now. I'll slice that in so you guys can see it, but I was just blown away with that. Um, so, I don't know, who knows? What, what do you guys kind of think on that? Um, yeah. Ain't nothing like a clean car. So, I don't know. But my biggest argument is this, okay, one, why didn't Lander, like, why didn't, you, why didn't they even offer it with proper, like, 20 inch and some KO2s on it, right? Why aren't they selling it out of the gates with that to show that they're a little bit more serious? Yeah, we're not gonna have solid, solid axles anymore because most of them are gonna spend their time on pavement, right? Land Rover knows most of the people buying them are you know, gonna be pussies and they're not gonna take them off road. That's just who buys Land Rover products right now. The majority of people, right? The, you know, you watching this, myself, obviously we're the ones who know what we're doing, <laughs> apparently. Um, or we just enjoy taking our, 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 you know, using our toys for what they're designed for. And that's cool, but you know, Land Rover, it's a company who needs to turn a profit and they know they're gonna sell more trucks. That's another thing. Is it gonna sell? Hell yeah, it's gonna sell, right? 
if they can sell Evokes and Discovery Sports and Velars, they're going to sell the freaking Defender like hotcakes as well. So yeah, it's going to sell. Um, they knew it was going to sell. I just think they could have done a better job to, and this is the biggest point right here, and tell me if you agree or you disagree with this point. I wish they would differentiate it on its capabilities more than the Range Rover or the current Discovery. Because prove to me how the Defender is any more capable than this or a Discovery, right? Completely stock out of the gates. Mods are cheating. Um, but out, out of the gates, how's the Defender any more capable? I really, really want to see that. And I want somebody to do a comparison test, you know, going up something, you know, taking, you know, new Range Rover, new, new Defender, and a new Discovery. Show me how the dis this Discovery is more capable. Um, because that's kind of what I always thought the Discovery should be, right? Or the Defender should be. Um, you know, it should be the most capable Land Rover. Isn't that kind of what they built their brand around? Um, or that name around? But I don't know. I could be wrong on that. What do you guys think? Right? It's like we all know Wrangler is going to be more capable, to, capable than a Jeep Grand Cherokee. But people who buy the Jeep Grand Cherokee are not buying it because they want to go rock crawling. They want to be able to crawl over some rocks. But they're not going to do it the same way a Wrangler is going to do it. Right? So, I don't know. Just got a couple of my thoughts right there with, with that. So... So, the question buddy asked me is, I got an Evoke, but I love going off-roading, but I'm worried about damaging it. So, how do you get over to the point of having fun with your, your rig, but not wanting to damage it? Because I want it to look nice all the time. Okay. Now, keep in mind, the first time most people go off-roading with their Land Rovers is third, third owner and seven years. So the vehicle's seven years old and it's on their third owner. That's like some stat I think I heard off TFL. But it's pretty common, I believe, so I think it is true, but my, my answer to that is, what did you buy it for? Did you buy it to look cool? Or did you buy it because you wanted something capable and have some fun with it? If I wanted to go rock crawling, I would have bought a Wrangler. I wanted something that... I was gonna feel like a boss in. It was gonna look badass in my eyes, because fuck what everyone else thinks. And it's one of the most capable vehicles in the world. So I bought the Range Rover, and the first time I took it off-roading, show you a little clip. This thing had maybe a thousand kilometers on it. And I took it up this hill and uh, you know I got stuck, backed up, nervous as hell. First time, like there's not a scratch on it yet. Dude, there's some scratches now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some more wounds in a second here. Just found a new one. <laughs> oh shit! Man, the wheel. Oh damn, that must have happened the other day. But um, why'd you buy it, right? Don't be afraid to use your toys that you're spending your hard money on the way they were intended, right? Bottom line is. Are you gonna get them scuffed up? Yeah, you're probably gonna get scuffed up, all right? Especially if you're like me and you like pushing it. You're gonna get scuffed up and that's okay. What's the point of having money if you can't enjoy it, right? Sure, you can drive it to the mall and back every day. Like, you know, most of the Range Rover owners or Land Rover owners, and that, that's totally cool. But we all know what it's capable of, so why not enjoy it? And my philosophy is just go out and enjoy, enjoy your toys, have fun with it. And I don't know, life's a lot happier that way. Now, let me show you some things. Okay, you guys see this? Okay, some of that's old. 
When I say old, <laughs> I knew about it. <laughs> this one I didn't know about. That message just happened yesterday or the other day. Okay. Right? But you know what? This, um, some of these, I might start taking this off. This is the panel that hides the tow hook. So it just comes off uh, four little things you twist with a coin and this whole section comes off. So I might just do that next time I get it painted. This, I got a crazy video to show you when I did this. This, that was nuts. You're coming. You're coming. Oh, look out, look out. Me and my brother uh, went up some fucking hard ass shit and we made it. But look, I went to a body shop, uh, Kermac, here in town. He said, oh yeah, we'll fix that up. Under 300 bucks Canadian. Because remember, this is all plastic. So they just buff it and paint it. I've done this part already. This will be the third time I've done shit like this and got it fixed. So fixing this type of damage is not that much money, right? You know, no, that's fine. Fixing something up here, right? If I got a rock, you know, body work, yeah, that's gonna be a lot harder, a lot more expensive, but it's all good. It's all good, right? Down here, got a little, I think I got, I thought I saw some scratches, a little right on the butt, right? Buff that out, probably won't even bother, okay? And then, uh, is this dirt? Okay, good, that's just dirt. But over here, a little rock. Oh, shit. You know, same thing, just buff that out. Add a little paint, be good as new. And then, that's new. So I just had these done in Monterey. But you know what? You guys see that? A couple, some scuffs. I'd rather have the scuffs and have the memories uh, and the experiences of me taking my brand new Range Rover off-road and really showing people what it's capable of and having that time um, than worrying about scuffing it up, shit like that. You know, once a year, I fix all the damages. Maybe it costs me a couple hundred bucks, you know, a day or two, a couple days of a rental. Um, wife hates it, but I told her, it's like, I'm gonna do that with every car. Like, you know, wait till we get the Porsche. Sorry, the Porsche, uh. wait till you see how fast I go through tires. It's just gonna be ridiculous, right? Like, I'm a car guy, it's what I do, right? Like, I'm not driving boring ass Lexus. <laughs> like, right, you give me a Toyota, I'm gonna beat the shit out of it and enjoy it because that's what it was designed for. Oh, maybe not a Toyota it was. Uh, maybe that Supra thing, but <laughs> God. You wanna talk about a company fucking up? Toyota Supra, that new thing. What a fucking disaster that is, huh? Jesus Christ, makes the Defender look like the 90s version. Like, oh man, that was a mess up. I don't know, man, sorry, sorry for the long-winded answer, but you know, I just, I just really feel there's two types of people. The people who buy the Range Rovers because they wanna look cool, like a fucking music video and shit. And they're like, oh, no, no, I wouldn't go off-roading in, in that. It's like, you know. And then the ones who use it like it was supposed to and enjoy it. Like, I just, I just, I just don't get people who, do, who just, yeah. I just, just two types of people. Just two types of people, man. So, Mr. Evoke, bro, go enjoy your Evoke. Right, I, I, I think that was the vehicle you had. Go enjoy it, man. Go have some fun, throw me some pictures, get that bitch up on three or two wheels, right? Take some videos and then go enjoy yourself. If anything, it'll motivate you to work harder, 
to get the next thing that you're looking for so you can go have fun with that, right? It's like people who want a Porsche or a Lamborghini and they don't go to track days. What the fuck you buy it for? <laughs> oh, to look cool in front of people you don't know. That's what you bought it for, for Instagram, right? Like why would you fucking buy something like that and not go for a track day? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why'd you buy a Range Rover and not go off-roading? It has all the ability. It's like people who buy a two wheel drive Jeep. What the fuck is wrong with you? God, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry if I'm offending anybody, but really. Yeah, that's just fucked. But uh, anyways, guys, I'm gonna finish this up because I'm losing light and I still have the inside to do. Jeez, you wanna see the inside? Here, check this out. Look at this, look at this. I guess it's not too, too bad right now, but you can see from the mud and that's after a quick little vacuum, but I got dirt everywhere and the wife's like, oh, there's, there's mud on the freaking visors. All right, she's like, there's dirt up there. I'm like, yeah, there's, like, yeah, there's probably dirt up there because when I was spinning the tires and sand was flying everywhere, the windows were open. <laughs> Whoops. Anyways, guys, hey, it was great kind of connecting with you again. Hit me up on Instagram and, uh, and all of that. Love to connect with you a little more, but uh, I'm going to finish up the truck here and then edit this video and get it up on the channel for all of you. Hope you all are having a blast wherever you are driving fine, driving hard. I mean, look at the sky. God damn. Anyways, until next time, everybody, I'm a Mecca. Drive hard.